Hey, how are, hello, 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 how are you? Thanks for joining the stream. I'll wait for people to get on, and then we'll get into it. So when you join, say hello from whatever part of the world or state you happen to be in. So hello from Nigeria, hello from Israel, hello from New York City. That'd be interesting to know. So hi from Montreal, Canada. It's always cool. So uh, I had a question put to me on the YouTubes yesterday, so I thought I'd jump on here and quickly address it. And then uh, once we do that, we'll do a little bit of Q&A. And while you're here, uh, please do give a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Thumbs up the, the video so people are more aware of what's going on. Uh, from India. Hey, how are you, my kid? Hello, India, Germany. Very cool. From Atlanta, Georgia. Close by. Yeah, nice. So, I hope everything is good. Uh, how many people are? 38? Okay, it's starting to come in. Hello from California. I'm 37. I want to be a developer. Huh? Very cool. Hello, Stefan. What are you What are you drinking on this session? This, just water today. Just water today. What's up, old man? Always, always great to see you. You too, man. Thanks for joining the stream. Hey, Lakeland, Florida. How are you, Kevin? I'm from Russia. My name is Iggy. Igor Kid Pudo. <laughs> Very cool. Jafar knows the official salute. Welcome to the stream, guys. Uh, I became I became a developer when I was 33. So there you go. All right. He answered the question. Okay, stream is over. Okay. Okay. What's up? London. Very cool. I'm 45 old computer teacher. Can I become a developer? Why not? Hello from Somalia. Very cool, man. Uh, we're doing 59. Hello from San Diego. I want to become a developer. <laughs> That's it. All right. So uh, while people are piling in, I am going to do my usual uh, suggested books. Then I'll cover the subject at hand, and then we will get into a little bit of Q&A. So let me um, do something I, I do once in a while. Hold on a second. So uh, iPhone. So here we go. Secondary camera. Some suggested reading. This is the book I'm, I'm talking about this week, The Naked Ape. This is a book where zoologists kind of look at the way humans act. Uh, it's very informative. This is a book I have since when I was like a teenager. So you see the pages are all yellow. One of the very, very few books I kept from that time frame. So if you're looking to learn more about your mind, I recommend The Naked Ape. Next, if you're a total beginner to web design development, you can check out my book on web design. You can get it on uh, Amazon. Uh, very, very highly reviewed. Uh, it's a few years old, doesn't matter. It's evergreen. It's a very laid out, well laid out book. The uh, graphic designers involved. It teaches you much more than just HTML and CSS. It teaches you about the server model and intro to JavaScript, all kinds of stuff. It's very cool color and images. And yeah, you get into the code, of course. So you want to check that out if you're a total beginner. And finally, for today, my apologies, finally for today, if you are more of a noob and you want to up your game, this is the refactoring book. This is on, this one here is on Java. There are links below this video. You have a Java version, you have the JavaScript version, but it's applicable to any modern programming language, Java, C Sharp, PHP, Python, uh, Swift, Ruby, whatever. This the, the lessons in here are applicable. This is more important than algorithms most of the time. This is very important, refactoring. This is basically how to clean up your code. So it's quick little examples. They describe the problem. They give you a good summary. Then they give you examples in the code, etc. This is one of the few books I've kept from uh, the early 1990, well, like late 1999. This was my first, the first version was 1999. Uh, this is, a, a, I gave that away and I, I got this vision, I think in 2003. It was one of the few books from that time that I keep because it's still 100% accurate. So yeah, these are the book recommendations. All right, so let's um, jump back to the uh, live view. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, <laughs> he likes the floor. Good, 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 good. All right, so let's get to some of the comments and we'll hold on. Hello from Bosnia. Just paused watching your yesterday stream to join this one. Laugh aloud. Very cool. I'm 39. Became a developer three months ago. There's nothing stopping you. Very good. Yeah. Privet from Russia. Very good. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. I appreciate it. 
Uh, hello from New York, Taz. I recognize. We got some regular people, regulars. Uh, did you start learning web dev at 33 or get a job at 33? Did you have a computer science background? So that's uh, my mentor and manager became a developer when there they were in 30s. So there you go. So we see. Hey, uh, how are you? If you don't know, this is the official secret salute of this uh, particular channel. If you don't know what this is from, it's from Star Trek. This is the uh, Vulcan salute. It's uh, live long and prosper. So it's uh, it's good. Hey, how are you, man? Hello from Toronto. Hey, Toronto. Another Canuck. I'm learning junior Word, WordPress dev. Very cool. A lot of opportunity in the WordPress world, that's for sure. Can Firebase be used as a backend for small-scale web applications? Why not? Why not? You have a great floor. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Eh? It's... Um, what is it? Walnut. Walnut. So I like it. Uh, why Shopify very much famous in all over the world? Well, it's pretty popular. Um, it's a, a very popular platform. Not nearly as popular as WordPress, but it's really up there. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, thanks for the, sh thanks for the thumbs, boys and girls. Sure, you can learn at 39. I learned at 42 and hired as a data scientist at 44. So there you go. Loy Luciano, thank you so much for sharing. God bless you. Ah, no problem. Hello from Nepal. About to go to bed. We'll catch up with your video in the morning. Good night. Good night, Rajan. Thanks for joining the stream, by the way. All right, let me just jump into uh, the subject at hand, and we'll go back to the, uh, the comments in the stream. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, pulling it up, pulling it up. Boom, boom. Oh, that's so good. Where did I put it? Hold on a second. I gotta just find. Hold on. So I'll copy that. Give me a second. Ah, my God. Where did I put it? <laughs> I had it right here and I lost it. So let me just get it again. Hold on a second. Uh, all right. YouTube. I think this is it. All right. Give me a second. Almost there, guys. Almost there. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Jeez. I think it's an image. It is an image. My apologies. I got it. Give me a second. Disorganized. There we go. Found it. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So this question posted in YouTube. Uh, hey, I really admire you and have seen many of your videos. I need your help. I need to do a podcast on career change. Um, I'm 39 years old. I need you to do a podcast. There we go. Excuse me. I am 39 years old. I have a degree on CS and have been working as a cybersecurity engineer since forever. But my heart is in software development and I'd love to sh a shift on my career if it's not too late. So the answer, it's not too late, of course. For fun, I have prepared and passed several Java, MySQL, Python certifications. I have tons of cybersecurity certifications. Uh, so he's just wondering if this could translate. So he's worried about his age, essentially. Uh, short answer, you're still quite young, especially since you have a cybersecurity background. That's a huge asset in terms of becoming a developer, uh, since you already know how to write code and program. So my suggestion to you, as I always suggest, you can find a video here on the seven steps to become a pro developer. Go watch that video. It's published maybe three or four videos ago. You would see a big seven in the thumbnail beside my face. My suggestion to you is just to go out there, do a couple of freelance gigs for free for a nonprofit or something, get a little work experience, put up a website so it's nice, and then you can show prospective employers not only do you have the cybersecurity background, but you've also built a couple of real applications. It could be very simple things. Just show that you've done real world coding work for even small gigs. And you should be good to go. So yeah, dude, you're in a very good position to get into coding. You're not too old, especially given the fact that you got a cybersecurity background. So yeah, just jump into it, man. Hello from Nepal, about to go to bed. Okay, got that one, okay. I graduated from Flytron Bootcamp two weeks ago and I am from Iraq. I want to find a job in the US or Canada. How to do that? Um, you have to... Uh, Try to reach out to some companies, maybe in the U.S. or Canada, see what they can do for you in that regard. Um, and maybe talk to the Canadian U.S. consulate, see what they say. 
Hey, Stefan, greeting from Wales. Hey, no problem. Hello, 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 Germany. How to solve problems or thinking in program? Oh, that's a whole subject of itself. I would have to cover that. If you do my courses, I talk about that. What are the typical freelance jobs for WordPress devs, building sites, or smaller jobs? What are typical freelance jobs for WordPress devs, building sites, or smaller jobs? Um, you're probably going to be building smaller websites for the most part as a freelancer. Freelancers tend to be hired by smaller companies. Um, so yeah, that's what you'll be doing. So you, it's, it depends on how you like to work. A lot of people like the freelance game because you have a lot of different projects you'll be working on during the year. So it keeps it interesting. Whereas if you go work for a very large organization, typically you're going to be working on one big project and you might be on that for one, two, three, four years, you know? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. What are, uh, do, 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 do. Bosnia. Very good. I've heard of Discord, but never used it. Is it like a forum? I'm going to join yours today. It's kind of more like a chat, kind of like a bunch of chat rooms. I just learned about it last week. So yeah, join it. Links below if you want to join my Discord. Um, so uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, check it out. A lot of activity on there. We've had nearly, we're over 800 people have joined already. Hopefully Shopify doesn't get hacked. Well, that's true. What are some entry level jobs to get your foot in the door of the industry while building your portfolio and skills? I, again, I just covered that. I would uh, do some freelance work uh, for free for maybe startups and something. Uh, explain the title, please. Free Palestine. So the titles, uh, hey Steph, a business approached me to build their website. I don't quite know how to charge. Any tips on how to price my services appropriately? Yeah, you, you got to work out as much as you can what the details of the project are. And, um, and, and, and you got to, yeah, and in so doing, uh, pad it since you've never done it before. Meaning if you figure it's going to take you 10 hours, maybe charge, plan on 15 hours or 20 hours, something like that. Um, because you have to develop a skill. It's a skill to be able to budget out, budget out your time in terms of projects. Very good. It's very important. We have good documentation. Very good that this is document. You know, emails. Everybody agrees before you start writing code. You should really take my freelance course. I cover all that in detail, including uh, project management templates and so forth. Not to sell it, but it's a pretty takes time to explain. So that course will be perfect for you. Links below. Just go to Studio Web Store. You can find it there. Uh, so yeah, good luck with that, and let us know how you go. Let us know how it goes. By the way. You know, good stuff. Sri Lanka, how are you, Dino? Welcome. That guy, Jamal, I recognize you. Hey, Stefan, Jamal from America. To do, I'm working today, I'm working with the Phaser framework to build a 2D game in TypeScript. Hmm. I'm curious about game dev, but I don't want to take five months and learn C Sharp. You know, I don't, I don't know how many people are using um, TypeScript to build games. I have no idea, it's not my field where I've looked into. But, you know, start building games, see how it is, and uh, also start looking around the market, see what the market is like. Very important that you do that so that uh, you get a feel for what's going on out there. It's very important. So don't be afraid to go out there and look around at the job listings. This will help you guide you in terms of making your technology, technology choices as you continue to develop your skill set. Is there any movies based on coding or something development area? Hacker movies. Well, yeah, there's the uh, the one on Facebook there. What was it called again? That Facebook movie? It was a good movie. I think it won an Academy Award. It came out years ago. That's probably uh, the closest I can think of right now. And maybe The Matrix. You know, it's kind of computer-oriented. So check that out. But I think the best one out there was the Facebook movie, which The Social Network, it's called. The Social Network. I think you can probably get it on Netflix or something. Hamed. Hey, Steph, any advice on note-taking in the world of programming as this is a way to learn so far, non-CS background? Yeah, it's good. I advise people with my Studio Web courses to take notes as you go because the actual act of writing down notes is going to help commit the some of the concepts to memory. Uh, most important, though, when you're learning to code is to write actual code and see code work, see it break, uh, and try to do at least 20 minutes a day. 
20 minutes a day. If you get your 20 minutes a day done, at least you're moving the ball forward. You're making progress. And it's very important that you write code and don't be afraid to make write code that doesn't work. You know, it's not like eggs. Eggs, you break them, they're finished. Code, you break them, you fix them, you fix them, you fix it, you fix it. But you got to write code. Don't get caught up in theoretical studies only. Uh, any insight on moving from WordPress freelancing to freelancing with newer libraries like React? Let the job market, Nick Calderon, let the job market and the freelance market dictate that for you. First thing I would do is I look around, see what the local demand is for React. If you see that there is a demand, then learn a little React and maybe do a little uh, small little React uh, test project on your own. And then once you feel comfortable that you can do something with React, then start advertising those services. Or you could do something very simple like I've done. Like the first time I built a database-driven website, at that point in time I had been doing development, or I've been writing code for a couple of years or so, and uh, but mostly front end. I'd done simple Perl CGI kind of web app development, nothing very complex. So I was approached by this company. It was a pretty involved project, and uh, it was like an early iteration of a social network. So I went in there. I looked at the project. I did my best evaluation. I gave them a quote. They accepted it. I got paid uh, my 50% up front. And then I went to the bookstore, because at the time it was bookstores, and I bought books on how to create databases and how to use this brand new technology at the time called ASP Classic. Well, it wasn't called Classic back then. It was called ASPs, 1996, I think this was. So I built this thing, and I just learned as I went on the fly. And I worked like a dog, because I said I was going to have it done in 30 days. And I was pretty accurate. I was fairly accurate, I should say, in my assessment. But I just I had to do overtime work to make sure I got it done in time. And I got it done in time, and I made sure the, the code was simple and clean. Uh, it was uh, self-describing code. Those are basic principles. You implement those principles, uh, you will do well with your, uh, your software. So I hope that helps. Uh, leave FFs. Yeah, all right, 186 people. That's pretty good. Please... If you like this stream, please give me a thumbs up. I'm trying to find the, the optimum time for people. I think this is the optimum time for live streams on coding. You come on here, you ask me questions. I've been developing since the 1990s. I'll answer any questions you have about coding and careers and uh, even dating advice as well. <laughs> JS is great for game dev. Consider learning a little Rust and Wasm. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah I heard that. Stefan, how much CS years did you code in VB script? Uh, hi from Croatia, very good. I heard Croatia is a beautiful country. Um, I did VB script for a few years at least. I like from VB script. I used that a lot in, uh, of course, classic ASP. Uh, for I guess '96, and I started leaving ASP in '98. Maybe I started doing more Java at that point. Something like that, but I also wrote VB, um, VBA, Visual Basic for Applications, to automate Excel processes and stuff as well. And I actually used VBA in uh, Internet Explorer when I created something called an HTA, Hypertext Application. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a Microsoft technology. I use HTAs actually for a it was for a Merck Frost project. Yeah. Hello from Montreal. Bonjour. Bonjour. Comment ça va? J'espère tout ça va bien. Uh, the Renaissance Ronin. Hey, it's a pretty good. I like that. I, hi, I just turned 40. Happy birthday. Young 40. I remember 40. That was 120 years ago. 29. I have an MBA and an MFA in creative writing. I'm currently an online English teacher and many other companies overlook my resume for management positions. Okay, learning to program. Okay, very cool, man. Yeah, you got a good background there. So if you, you add into the mix your software development skills, coding skills, it will make you a much more formidable individual. So um, something you learn from MMA, what mixed martial art taught us is that if you can bring in skill sets from different disciplines, you become a much more complete individual. In the case of MMA, much more complete fighter. A little bit of jiu-jitsu, a little bit of Thai boxing, some boxing, maybe freestyle, freestyle wrestling, etc. 
Same thing with software development. Same thing with just general skills. So he's got an MBA. He's got good writing skills. He throws into the mix some good software development skills. You're going to be very good because a big part of being successful as a developer, something I keep telling people, is to learn to commu communicate very well. That's why I put together a course on communication and psychology called Lizard Wizard. Links below. So you should check that out if you want to up your game. If you want to up your game as a developer, besides learning how to uh, refactor, this is the refactoring book, uh, you should learn how to communicate more effectively. If you do, you become a superstar. Uh, uh, very cool, Amsa. Hello, hey, Turkey. Hello from Turkey. How are you? Uh, what are my chances, please? What's your opinion? Uh, Renaissance. Your chances are very high. Your chances are very high. If you just, again, I recommend when you're first starting out, just do my little uh, suggested 20 minutes a day thing. Just a, It's a psychological um, technique, if you will, of education. And 20 minutes will soon become 25 minutes and 30 minutes and 40 minutes and an hour. But you want to set the minimum of 20 minutes a day, four days a week. Be sure to give yourself uh, time to rest, to let the information percolate through the brain. Because when you're learning how to code for the first time ever, you are literally beginning to re rewire your brain for a new way of thinking. So you have to give your brain a chance to uh, adapt to it, right? Build a new synopsis. So rest, exercise, drink lots of water, uh, and give yourself breaks. So if you just keep going, you will succeed. You know, you you got your MBA and MFA, so I'm, I have no doubt you'll be able to follow through. Once again, if you like this stream, please give me the thumbs up. If you love my, if you hate my long hair, give me two thumbs down. Um, hey, hello from Calgary. How are you, fellow Canuck? Welcome to the stream. Uh, would you recommend using Net Netlify to host clients' website projects? I have never used them, so I have no opinion either way. They could be great. What are your thoughts on business analyst roles? Are they comfier than the developer, more glamorous? Hmm. Depends how good you are. Like you, you could be a, a very well-respected developer if you're really good at what you're doing. You can be a very well-respected analyst if you're very good at what you're doing. Um, I would try it out, see how it goes. You know, see if it fits you or not. When you become a business analyst, you have to be. Uh, well, first you have to have good macro skills, if you will. Let me back that up. Let me explain. I have found in my career, going back to the 90s, there's two, type, there's two types of developers. People who are very good at highly detailed code. Like you tell them, I need you to build a device driver for this, uh, for this thing here. So they're very good. They'll, put, they'll break out the C or C++ and they'll do fantastic with this. But that same developer might be terrible at building a UI with view or React, for example. And the opposite, you can have somebody who's a great developer in terms of front end, in terms of usability and UX and, 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 and uh, wiring up all that JS, et cetera, and firing off HTTP requests, et cetera. But they wouldn't be so good at device driver programming or maybe AI uh, programming. So you have to figure out where your strength lies in terms of uh, what type of development you're going to get into. Welcome to, to the channel, by the way. My name is Stefan. If you've never been here before, I am the 169-year-old developer. That's the truth. No lie. No exaggeration there. Guaranteed. And uh, another thing I'm known for is I have the best live stream bokeh in the game. Bokeh is blurriness. See how, how crazy that is? This is like, doesn't get any better than that. There we go. Come on, camera. So that's it. So uh, let me just brighten this image up. The sun is going down, so it's... Um, I show you here. Let's just go in here. It's a cloudy day today. I'll give you a, a, another view. There we go. Here's the my view outside, uh, and this is my main camera. If you're curious, and this is going to be the freaky effect. I don't know why it does that. You see, that it's it's going crazy here. Anyway. Very, uh, very, very, very valuable streaming area. That's it. 
<laughs> uh, all right. Again, if you like this stream, how many? We 200 people, only 117 likes, thumbs. Come on, that's pretty bad. Um, uh, how dare you put your device in the kitchen so you could listen to what my family talks about? Uh, I'm a 34 and I want to become a program. He should be fine. Exactly. <laughs> I want to say thanks again, man. You're awesome. I appreciate that. Uh, whenever I see the stream live on YouTube, I immediately want to work with Co. Thanks for the inspiration. Ain't no problem. I'm glad I could help, dude. I'm 41, and it seems too hard to change careers. You want to transition. You want to transition. You don't just drop the old career and 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 then and then and then you know jump out of the plane without a parachute. What you want to do is you want to transition into the new career. So you you learn on the side. You start with that 20 minutes a day, what anybody can do, and then you start slowly, slowly building up skills, and then you do a couple of little side jobs, freelancing for nonprofits. Build up your experience, build up some, ex um, not experience, well, experience a little bit, but build up some confidence. And then when you can show something, you got a portfolio, then you can, when you got a, a job that's set, you got one, then you can move out. How to become a data scientist. I am not a data scientist, but I think you have to uh, study data science, I would imagine. Uh, start with Python, though. If you start with Python programming, because Python is probably the most popular language for data science these days. Hey, thanks very much for your reply. I've been thinking on turning into video game programming or make my way into Java expert. What would be better? Do a little bit of examination of both, you know, check out both uh, environments in terms of work environments and work opportunities, and also look at the type of program. It's different type of programming. Uh, Java is used in game development, but it's when you're doing Java, generally speaking, it's either Android or server side application development for very large organizations for the enterprise, as they say. Yeah. So what else are we doing? Uh, is starting a blog about a programming niche worth doing a way to show expertise and help with getting clients? It could be if you want to geo target a particular freelance uh uh, client, if you will. Could be. Uh, maybe you can document projects that you're doing and put that, that out there. Yeah, becoming an authority is, uh, it works. Uh, web development or Python and data science. Web development has more flexibility, more flexibility, more job opportunities. Not to say that there's no jobs in data science. There's plenty of jobs in data science. Whoa. But it's just web development is the most flexible option and it's a different type of programming. So you may want to dabble in data science, see what, what, what that is like, watch some videos on it, see what people are saying, dabble in it, dabble in web development and then make a choice based on what you like to do. But they're both very good. Yeah, exactly. That movie on coding, The Social Network is probably the one you want to see. It's very well, it's a good, it's a good movie. Yeah, Social Network. Exactly. Uh, 42 mobile freelancing, 17 years still. Oh, very good. Yeah, exactly. Mobile, that's another area. I say web is number one. Number two is mobile for freelancing. In terms of opportunity, they both pay well. How to become a back-end developer without knowing front-end development? You have to know at least a little front-end. You have to be, don't have to be an expert. Excuse me. But you have to understand HTML and HTTP, a little bit of CSS, and a smidgen of JavaScript as well. Yeah, Kid Poodle, very good film. Uh, 39, I want to be a dev. This is exactly me. Oh, so you good, man. Uh, how does a large team work on projects? Do teams come up with naming conventions to stay consistent? 100%, Terrell. They come up with naming conventions. They typically will leverage uh, frameworks, whether internal frameworks or commercial frameworks. So, for example, if you're doing uh, web development, you would, you know, Java, you probably use Spring as, as an example. That's one framework or Spring Boot. Or if you're doing PHP, you'd probably be using Laravel. Or if you're doing Python, probably Django. Um, and there will be, and some development houses will have internal frameworks and processes that they have in place, naming conventions that they have in place. It's very important that you have that. So everybody is writing code in a consistent manner 
So the code is a lot easier to maintain, a lot, a lot easier to debug. So that's a good question. So yes, I have an opportunity to transition from a customer success manager role at a research firm to analytics client manager role. I have no formal data training. Is this a good career move? That I couldn't say, Devin. I'm not uh, familiar with those uh, professions. What I would do is, first of all, look at the availability of jobs in each of those roles. Look at the salary potentials. Look at the attrition rate to see that uh, whether there's the, how the market um, views and handles these different roles, right? So you don't want to move from a role where there's a lot of job opportunity and upward momentum into a niche area where it might be difficult to find a new job after a while. I don't know. They could both they could both be equal. And then the other thing I would do is just pay attention to the detailed day-to-day -day lifestyle of those two different types of jobs. When you're choosing a development career, one of the things I strongly suggest that you do, whether it's development any career, is that you think about how you like to work during the day and the week. Like literally what you like to do. Do you, do you like getting up early? Do you like having to wear a, a suit or not? Do you like going into work? You prefer work at home. Do you like working at teams or you like working individually? You like working in large teams or you like smaller teams? Do you like flexibility in terms of the hours of your work or you want to be in there at nine and out by five? Those type of things. These are all important because this is, this is basically how you're going to live your day to day. So you should write all these notes down and then start figuring out what type of programming and development, what type of job will fit that criteria. Nobody else ever talks about that, but that's, that's an exercise I did years ago. I remember years and years ago, I said, okay, how do I like to actually live my days, what I like to do, as opposed to I want to be a Java coder, I just want to be a JS coder. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, Java coder typically means that you're going to be working for a large organization, which typically means you have to go into work, which typically means you have to work with a big team, which typically means you get the idea. Whereas JS, more flexibility there. So if, know, let me turn on the uh, brightness here. Sorry about that. The sun is going behind clouds, so you see that change. What I want to do a video related to this that you should watch. Here it is, the Coder's Career Path. This is free, join, sign up. All the links are below. You get a free 29-minute video lesson which talks about what's it like working as a C++ coder, what kind of company you work for, what's it like working as a Java coder, what kind of company, what kind of projects you'd be working on. What's it like doing PHP? What kind of project? What type of company? Et cetera, et cetera. It's a 29-minute video. It's a great video to give you an overview of the development world in general. Another thing I'm going to point out since I'm here, so you sign up, it's free, just join my newsletter. Another thing I suggest is check out Lizard Wizard Komodo. This is my, inter it's not interactive, it's email-based, and you get lessons, psychology, communication lessons, personal dev lessons for free delivered to your inbox and you got little activities to take. So I highly recommend you check that out. It's based on my Lizard Wizard course. Lizard Wizard, you got to buy me a couple coffees, but this is the first course I think you should take if you want to learn how to become a developer. Trust me, it has huge impacts in terms of how quickly and easily you learn, how you navigate your jobs. And this is training based on the cognitive sciences, martial arts, my meditation background, my business experience. Um, so yeah, it's fun. It's a fun short course, two hours or so. You learn a lot. So uh, like, here's a review, right? Thanks, Steph. My confidence. Thanks to Steph. My confidence when it comes to learning in coding and learning in life in general. Lizard wizards know what I'm talking about. Has greatly improved. This is from Google, right? So you know it's legitimate. It's it's a night and a day difference when you take your foot off the pedal and allocate 20 minutes a day for any of your endeavors and repeat that day in and day out. The compound effects start kicking in and you find yourself being able to do something that you couldn't before. I will listen to Steph to what uh, I will listen to what Steph has to say or shows whenever that means being better at my job, making money and being a better individual overall. So that's Lizard where's it specifics. What's this? Uh, Hillary says, I have taken a few of web coding courses, but I've learned 
for most via this one. I love how the lessons are set up and broken down so that the concepts can be understood better. I also like being able to replay and I've and I've taken many notes. Anyway, it just goes on. You can go check that out. So uh, I highly recommend if you're interested in learning quickly and easily, uh, my courses are well regarded in that regard. So um, yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Mr. Robot, how are you? Uh, uh, okay, TV show recommendations, Silicon Valley on HBO. Of course, yeah, yeah. What do you think about data structures and algorithms? You need to know if you want to become a programmer. You need to know just the very basics. For 99% of programming, data structures and algorithms are of minor importance. Minor importance. They're there. Like in my Python course, you learn about the basic data structures in Python, which are universal across all the languages, except for tuples, maybe. Um, in my JavaScript course, you learn the basics of data structures. An algorithm is just a, uh, a way of, uh, of processing information in code, I suppose. Um, any of the complex algorithms, typically speaking, unless you're doing AI programming or game development, you're just going to leverage libraries. So you're much better off to learn uh, refactoring and design patterns uh, if you want to level up your game as a real developer. That being said, in some companies, they will have these uh, algorithm tests that they make you do, uh, even though they're not really used in most development. Uh, I became a developer at 29, so I recently begun learning functional programming. How is it that it's not industry standard? I feel like it is overall much better than OOP. Yeah, functional coders really like uh, that kind of development. It's just uh, OOP is the dominant one. It's just the way it is, man. It's hard to displace very well-established technologies that are pretty functional. So I'm sure in some areas, for sure, that functional is better. But it's, if it's not significantly better, you're going to have trouble getting adoption and buy-in. You're right. I don't think there are many games in TypeScript, but I already know JS, so I wanted to play around with it. Yeah, there's no no harm in doing that, man. No hard, no hard, no excuse me, no harm in doing that. Pirates of Silicon Valley, 99. Hey everyone, I hope you're away. Hey, Satera, how are you? What do you think about plugin developer choose as career? If there's jobs, take it. If there's jobs, take it. Okay, how we're doing? So I'm gonna have to. We're gonna be coming to an end of the stream fairly soon. I'll answer a few more questions because I got to get to uh, that call that came in before. All right, hello from Austria. Okay, city. So by the way, guys, if you look below, there's a link to my Discord server. So if you want to continue, I noticed people are having conversations during the live streams. People ask me to set up the Discord server. So it's down below, link below. So you can continue to have discussions without having me, without having to be, uh, me having to be online. There we go. Uh, does 10,000 hour rule apply to coding? You know, roughly, I think uh, it's like anything. It's one of those universals. You become really competent as a developer, typically. You know, all things being equal, at around three years, you start getting at a pro level, a real pro level. Um, and that pretty much comes to about 10,000 hours, uh, give or take. But, you know, everybody's a little bit different, you know. It depends on a lot of circumstances. Circumstances. Ivan Londono, how are you? Hello from Miami, Florida. What would you charge for PWA for local small business with simple database, example business being construction, restaurant stores? Oh, man. It depends on the, the features, right? It depends, like, what would you charge for a car? Is it, you know, is it a Porsche? Is it a Honda? Uh, what would you charge for a house? Two bedroom, three bedroom? It's very difficult. Again, I would suggest, again, I'm not trying to sell it. I guess I am a bit, but check out my freelance course. A big part of it, it's called the Complete Freelancer. You can find the link below just to the store. Just go to the store. It, um... It's also a project management course. It teaches you to manage projects and time and how to price out things. So, yeah. Uh, talking about MMA, are you a fan of Joe Rogan or his podcast by any chance? Yeah, I like Joe Rogan. It's good stuff, man. I like he brings in people from all over, all over the place, politically and scientists, and it's just really cool. I think Joe Rogan's the, the Oprah of today. Any advice for your first ever technical interview, just about to start looking for work, almost 
finish my resume and CV, getting help to improve them from resources at school. Yes, yeah, study the company you're about to interview for. So let's say you got an interview for, I don't know, Canon, Canon cameras. You find out what, you, I'm sure you can find information online, what the interview process is like for Canon, what kind of technology they're using. And then do, do a bunch of uh, training, if you can, quickly, uh, in terms of, you know, answering and, and running, answering questions you might find in the, in the uh, technical interview. So research the company is the short answer. And then bone up on whatever you find in the research. Uh, your thoughts on software testing as start to a career. I have a preference for web dev. Employees tells me that I will do about 50% dev and .NET. Software testing as start of career. Well, you know, if, uh, if it leads to web development and it's the type of work that you enjoy doing, why not do it, right? Why not do it? Okay, here we go. All right. Hello from Morocco, from India. Salut, salut. J'espère tout ça va bien. Hello, Stefan. Do you see good future in for Blazor? I haven't looked at Blazor, so I don't know. Right now, I would, I would, I would think it's more of a need to nerd tech niche, but it could blow up. But uh, who knows? How are you? Would you say communication skills equals to sales skills? It's all part of it. It's all part of it. To be a good salesperson, you have to have good communication skills. So communication skills is kind of the foundation of it, and then you add sales on top. But without good communication skills, you don't have sales skills. Without good communication skills, you can't be a lead developer. Without good communication skills, you cannot be a system architect. Communication skills are so important. That's why I put out the Lizard Wizard course, because I, I realized, well, I knew, but I, I realized that a lot of people needed that kind of training. So there you go. Uh, I've got an entry-level interview by tomorrow. Any advice? Yeah, if you don't know much about the company, learn about the company so you understand what's going on at the company. If uh, they're using technology, let's say you find out that they use a lot of React, make sure you're up to date with what's going on in the React in, in terms of uh, any new updates to the, to the library. Uh, I, I, I assume you know their basics, of course. And just become familiar with the company so you can put questions to them and just be as nice as you can be. Soft skills are important. Yes, thank you so much for your insight. I'm doing four hours a day of coding with breaks in between. You're so kind. That's it. Renaissance Ronin. That's the way to do it, man. Khalid Boa? Abu? Khalid? I, I, I messed up your last name. My apologies. Hello from Morocco. Yeah, thanks for joining. I'm 24, 24 years old. Is age is good age for learn. Roma Belco, it's a very good age for learn. So I, I suggest you jump on it. Start 20 minutes a day. You'll be good. I from India. All right. How can someone map coding in his brain for a long time? How can somebody map coding in his brain for a long time? Hamed, I think you mean memorization. You do that by writing code, by writing code. Um, but you'll find as you become more experienced as a developer, you'll forget code that you wrote six months ago. It's normal. Uh, the most important thing about software development is understanding the concepts. The concepts are more important than anything else. The specific code memorization, learning the specific syntax is not nearly as important as understanding the concepts. Because you've got code editors will help you write out the specific syntax all right all right so again thanks guy um thanks for the thumbs up it's pretty good 171 thumbs up 201 people joining the stream i appreciate it so this seems like a good stream um <laughs> it's another dimension yeah 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 the matrix exactly yeah. whoa too much gray in your view uh Hi, sir. Any good books for learning to become a Microsoft Windows Pro? Not familiar. Not familiar with that. Okay, so how are we doing here? All right, all right. So let's see. How are we doing for time? I'm trying to find some good questions. Wow, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of people. So 
Give us dating advice. What woman love the most? Be honest and realistic. I think if you want to uh, impress the women, you have to, be, as they say, become the best version of yourself, as they say. You have to, uh, A, uh, good communication skills. B, uh, needless to say, good hygiene. C, dress well. Uh, next, D, be confident. Be confident. Don't be a pushover. Women don't like pushovers. Um, yeah, so you work on yourself. You work on yourself. You be friendly. you friendly to everybody. And then the, the uh, dating opportunities will increase exponentially. Hello from Pakistan. Hey, welcome to the stream. Hi, I'm 14. I'm starting to learn Unity, but every. That's cool. That 14 is a fantastic age. Congratulations. All right. Um, so I'm going to ask a question of you guys. So again, Discord links below. Just join the Discord server. I, mean, I should always put it a little... Uh, Hold on. There we go. Here's the Discord server. Join. I've had a bunch of people join already. Uh, we're at over 800. We're closing on 800 people. And this is like a week old Discord. So I would uh, highly suggest you want to interact with people offline. Check it out. Uh, join the Discord server. All right. So enough of that. Also, look for links below for courses and training. I have my mentoring program. I'll, I'll do one last plug if you indulge me uh people want to know so i have this is kind of like steph boot camp if you want to boot camp with the 169 year old nerd check out link below this is my most complete comprehensive training it has everything everything i teach in here plus private mentoring groups private zoom meetings you buy in access for life if you want that mentoring that coaching and that support you want to get everything from all the coding languages, job interview prep, resume building. It's all here. It's uh, my most comprehensive. It's not one of my twenty dollars courses. It's it's a lot. It's it's going to cost you more than that, but it's a lot cheaper than the ten thousand dollars boot camp. And you get you get a lot out of it. As uh, there are people on the mentoring group here. All right. So I guess we're getting pretty good traffic. Uh, Two hundred. So I think. For you guys, this is probably the best time of day. If you just let me know, this is the best the best time of day in a write a comment. This is the best time of day for a stream, and I'll just start doing them more around two o'clock, around this time, about you know an hour before this. Is Stick an underrated band? I love Sticks. I saw um, a few years ago. I saw Dennis DeYoung. Uh, I think it's his name, Dennis DeYoung, one of the lead singers the lead writer from Sticks. I went to a concert and it was filled with people even older than me. And they were all dressed in clothes from the 80s, from the early 80s. You see all these uh, bald guys with long hair, but they're, they're all bald here, but they have long hair and they're wearing Sticks t-shirts from the 1980s and plastic black jackets. It's the funniest thing. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, so let me know. This is probably the best time uh, being a developer, uh, Stefan, how can a developer create passive income even if it's small? Oh, you can have a little SaaS, you can start providing hosting services. I would have to do a video on that. All right, uh, I call it Steph Camp. <laughs> best time of the day, so it's best time of the day for you guys. CC uh, plus the mother for all for a lot of machine idioms called programming languages. Yeah, yeah, a C is like, there are all these, C, you know, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, to a certain extent, PHP, uh, they're all very C-oriented languages, amongst others. Uh, Objective-C is another one. Best for me, what are the tech stacks you experienced at? Oof, I started with, um, Perl, Perl CGI, the web, uh, I did, did a lot of Java, uh, not double E, not J2 double E, but Pojo based Java. I did uh, some C sharp, uh, .NET, VB.NET was the same thing. And I've done a bunch of other things, uh, some PHP, a little Python, developed some, we developed uh, one or two things in Ruby. I don't count things that I didn't get paid to do, I count things that I made money with, and a bunch of weird stuff like HTAs, uh, director program of Lingo. So, yeah. A uh, very good time for Europe, best time of the day, best time of the day, perfect time here in Europe. Okay, older, about 169, really. 
Uh, okay, good, 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 good. Middle of my work shift, not the best time. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, no, it's not. You can get into it. You can start making, you can start getting a job, entry level job within a few months. And then why not? Yeah. Uh, how to set up a live AWS server. You don't have to look into that. Uh, 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 yeah, I have a bunch of stuff. There might be 50, 60 videos, Python, JS. Uh, they're up there. They're up there. There's also a bunch of samples that you can watch uh, of my tutorial videos on uh, the Studio Web Store. So there they are. They're there. Yes, Python is written in C. All right, guys. Thanks for joining the stream. I got to answer that call and some DMs that came in. Again, I invite you to check out the Discord server below. Thanks for joining the stream. And uh, this seems like a good time. I appreciate the thumbs up, by the way, guys. We'll talk soon. I'll end off with my uh, ASMR boat ride for you guys. Ciao.